Excellency, the English Ambassador, Lord Stormont. Monsieur Virgin, I demand to know if this scandalous report which just reached me is true. Uh, will your lordship be seated? Oh, confound it, I don't feel like sitting. <laughs> well, perhaps you would care to tell me what this scandalous report is. Did you know that Dr. Franklin, the American rebel, has landed at Oray? Oh, that is quite true, my lord. Now, do, do, please sit down. And furthermore, that he intends to come here to Paris, perhaps he's already on the way. My informants have given me the identical information. I know that Franklin has been sent here to arrange for an alliance with France. And to you, the foreign minister of France, I issue stern warning. If this, this pamphleteer, this chief of the American rebels, is permitted to enter Paris, I will be forced to leave. And without the usual diplomatic courtesies. Oh, my lord, your fears are unfounded. I assure you, a messenger has already been sent to intercept Dr. Franklin and to prevent his approach to Paris. Oh, I, I had no idea. Of course, that makes a difference. However, eh? there are, as you no doubt know, many roads to Paris from Auray. Miss Paris, you. Well, I... Huh? It is incredible to me that despite the guarded secrecy with which everything is ostensibly being conducted, Half the population of Paris collects itself in front of this hotel on the very night that Dr. Franklin moves into it. Now, Lee, you must admit it's rather difficult to hide Americans like us in Paris. But you especially. For the past two days, the city's talked of nothing else. I confess I was somewhat surprised to learn that you had been selected a member of the commission, especially since you've been such an outspoken critic of foreign missions seeking help. Upon its failure, success may well hang the future of the colonies and the outcome of the war. And therefore, a member of the commission should not be selected casually. And you think it has been? After all, I know you didn't seek the appointment. True. Yet it was the will of Congress that I come to Paris. And uh, since that will reflects the will of the people, I was duty-bound to do so. Oh, I know it's said of me in the Philadelphia Terrans that I'm an amateur, an inventor, a homespun humorist, but certainly not a diplomat. But, Dr. Franklin, we will be dealing with wily, artful, professional diplomats. True. But uh, sometimes the fresh and genius perspective of the novice can circumvent the classic designs of the practice professional. Are you willing to risk everything on such a gamble? Dr. Franklin gambled heavily in crossing the ocean. I've no doubt the British would have been happy to hang him for treason against the Crown. At my age, there is peril in a rocking chair. From Versailles. This appears to be the answer of the French Foreign Minister to our request for an audience. Happy to meet with you in... five days. Five days? With all the matters pending, the war going badly at home, how can we afford to cool our heels for five days? Under well, the circumstances, I doubt that we have much choice. You might remember that it is we who need France at this point. We have yet to prove whether she needs us. I suspect, Mr. Lee, that uh, our mission is not so simple as you imagined and uh, may well take many times the five days that you now seem unable to spare. Good evening, gentlemen. Be seated, monsieur. Now, please, you must comprehend that it is impossible for me to receive you as ambassadors of another nation. I grant this audience to three individual gentlemen for whom I feel the most profound esteem. A necessary distinction. I am a blunt man, monsieur. Little given to diplomatic pleasantries. We are met for a purpose. I should like to discuss that purpose. Ah, oui. And you, monsieur le docteur, what do you have to say? Only that it is the earnest desire of our government to enter into a treaty of alliance and commerce with your king. As things stand, the British Navy has our ships bottled in and we have no navy capable of coping with English ships of the line. The main thing America needs is French warships, equipped and manned to convoy our shipping in and out of ports. <laughs> you Americans, you learn fast the tricks of our trade. In other words, 
what you ask in the innocent sounding phraseology of diplomacy is an outright declaration of war with England. Hmm? If Monsieur prefers to be blunt and uh, American about it, yes, this is exactly what we propose. Well, at the moment, I fear it is quite out of the question. While I personally would like to do whatever I can, consider the problems which confront me. I must convince a king to help the subjects of another king to overthrow a crown. Also, my king would hesitate to plunge into war on what looks like, at the moment, to be the losing side. Remember, Monsieur Vigène, the tide goes out, but it must come in again. Well, a diplomat is a practical realist. It is the statesmen who are the dreamers. In any event, Monsieur, we shall count heavily upon your sympathy. You may rely on it, Monsieur. Send for me, Monsieur? Monsieur Jules, have you ever had occasion to impersonate a servant, a footman, a butler, or a valet? Mais oui, monsieur. Don't you remember when you placed me in the Spanish embassy, I was a distinct success as a valet? Ah, yes. Well, you are to apply at once to Dr. Franklin, the American, and offer your services as a valet. Make no issue of the wages. He has little money, I believe. And do you have any special instructions? No, I can only tell you that I feel it would be imprudent of me not to know exactly what these Americans are thinking, whom they are seeing, the sense of the correspondence which they receive, as well as that which they said. I understand, monsieur. and quiet surroundings. You know, that hotel in Paris was becoming intolerable, especially for an old man. <laughs> Besides, the whole of this is rent-free. Monsieur de Chaumont's own private contribution to the cause of the revolution. My one expense is my valet, and even he works for a remarkably modest wage. Dr. Franklin, again I beg of you, Keep your correspondence and official papers under lock and key. Oh, that's such a nuisance. It's an elementary precaution. Why, this country's full of spies. We dare trust no one. How may we oblige you? Ah, monsieur, it is how I may oblige you. All I require is a letter of introduction to your valiant General Washington, instructing him to appoint me an officer in the Continental Forces. I believe uh, this is what you require. Monsieur knew in advance of my arrival the purpose of my visit? No, but uh, we received literally hundreds of such requests. To facilitate matters, I made up a number of these to have them handy when needed. Sir, the bearer of these, who is going to America, presses me to give him a letter of recommendation. Though I know nothing of him, I must refer you to himself for his character and merits, with which he is certainly better acquainted than I can possibly be. You presume upon your age, Dr. Franklin. Were you a younger man, I most certainly would run you through. So, young man, you are that determined to fight, either in America against the British or here in France against me. I offer my assistance to your country, and you reward me with the insult. Bonjour, monsieur. Wait, young man. Though the armies are full, if you are sincere in your devotion to our cause, there is work to be done here. Physical courage is not man's proudest destiny. You think so, monsieur? I know so. 
Times are changing, Andre, and so are values. There is a new breed of men developing, the sort of men who built the colonies. Join with us, and you can be such a man. Voila! A new recruit reports for duty. Oui, monsieur, I met him. Well, does he have news from the colonies? General Washington is conducting the remnants of his forces in disorganized retreat. Your republic's capital has fallen to General Howe. Philadelphia, taken. Are you sure? Is that all, or is there more? There is, I regret to say, more. Burgoyne's army is moving to bisect the insurgent forces from the north. We must act immediately. Put it to the French point blank. Either they come to our aid now or... Or what? Suppose they ignore our ultimatum. What would you have us do, Mr. Lee? Break off diplomatic relations? Declare war? No. We can only wait. Wait? For what? For our armies to be completely annihilated? Who will come to our aid then, Dr. Franklin? We can only pray. Pray for a miracle. <laughs> Burgoyne surrendered. Burgoyne surrendered. At Saratoga, sir. He and his entire army are now prisoners of war. Thank heaven the tide runs in again. The others must hear of this. I have news from England. Lord North's cabinet is near to toppling due to Burgoyne's surrender. Fearing a United States treaty with France, North is urging the government to come to terms with the rebels. Do you intend to listen to a proposition which offers the colonies less than independence? I have no intention of entertaining any offer this Wentworth may be bringing us. Not for a moment. I am meeting with him solely for the effect it will have upon the French. You mean to inform them of this? Not precisely. I uh, expect they will hear of it, however. Gentlemen, what is the one thing France fears most? A British treaty with the colonies. Exactly. Yes, gentlemen, you may inform Wentworth. I shall be delighted to meet with him. And so, having been forced into this war with the colonies against their Will, the British Ministry wishes to undo this grievous mistake. As simple as that. They are prepared now to return to the imperial status as it existed prior to 1763 and to repeal those obnoxious acts that were since passed. Further, they will remove their troops, except those on the New York Islands. Those are rigorous terms, sir. How, sir? His Majesty's government is prepared to forgive and to forget and furthermore, to forgo the very human urge to chastise. This to me, sir, would appear to be the very epitome of magnanimity. Until recently, we had hoped our European friends would... Uh... European friends? Come, sir, if they have failed to give their support up to now, by what stretch of imagination can you expect their support in the future? I am afraid that what you say is only too true. Then may I convey the message back home to England that will bring both joy and thanksgiving to both sides of the ocean. Tentatively, yes. Good. Dr. Franklin, I think you're playing a dangerous game. I too am afraid. Gentlemen, no good gambler ever gives his hand away by showing his emotions, so please compose yourselves. I know Virginia has swallowed the bait, else he wouldn't have suddenly requested this meeting. Calmness, gentlemen, calmness. Monsieur Vergen. Monsieur. A pleasure. Would 
you be seated? I trust this unexpected request for an audience does not discommode you too much? Not at all, monsieur. Uh, will you have a glass of wine? No, merci. I must come to the point of my visit. I do not think I need tell you, monsieur, that I personally have always had the deepest sympathy for the cause which brought you to our shores. Sir, I speak for all three of us when I assure you that it has been only your personal interest that has made our mission at all bearable. However, there comes a time when adversity can no longer be contended with. A time when, standing alone, without a helping hand, one must accept an end to the bloodshed and suffering at whatever the cost. Uh, knowing that increases my pleasure in telling you that His Majesty also is acutely aware of the situation and that he feels the time has come when France must, in humanity's name, lend a helping hand to that infant nation across the seas, a nation whose valiant struggle has aroused the admiration of the entire world. So in this document, he asks, Monsieur, what it is you require to keep your flame aglow and to save you from a disastrous surrender to England. Monsieur, Monsieur oui. Virgin, you have just saved this commission from a most repugnant decision. Indeed, sir, we had, as you can see, prepared two documents, one for your government and the other, the fatal one, for England. Fortunately, the one to you does, I believe, give a most apt answer to the question you just put. It proposes a treaty of amity and commerce. The assistance of your navy, arms and ammunition, and a firm reliance on your unwavering friendship, so that we may reject all propositions of a shameful peace from England. But, monsieur, that is exactly the answer for which we were looking. And I am happy to inform you that France is now prepared to enter into such a treaty as you request immediately. You will excuse me, monsieur. I must leave at once to convey this news to Versailles. I am happy to speed you on your way, sir. Merci, monsieur. The good Dr. Franklin, once the apprentice diplomat, has now graduated. He now teaches lessons to the old faculty. Au revoir, monsieur. Au revoir. Monsieur. <laughs>